stocks trade firm and in a narrow band with mid caps outperforming. IT leads the charge today followed by autos while the utilities, metals as well as financials are the drags. Bharti Airtel ticks up after it posts healthy growth in revenues with India margins expanding on improved average revenue per user. Analysts live, remain upbeat on the stock. Select startups write to the government and the RBI seeking relief for Paytm Payments Bank. Meanwhile, both Geo Financial Services and Paytm rubbish the reports of a prospective wallets business team. So when Pharma slides on a sharp fall in sales and profits while a decline in sales hurts Prince Pipes. But Zydus Life gains on a proposed buyback and Idea Forge surges on concluding a healthy quarter and the new listing BLS e-services debuts at a near 130% premium to its offer price. Interbank call rate stays around 6.5% for a third day even as RBI announces a reverse repo auction to keep the yields from falling further. Now, markets see lower call rate as an indication of more dovish RBI policy. Hello and welcome. You've tuned into Business Lunch. I'm Nisha Podar and with me is today is Manglam Malu. Hi, Manglam. Hi. So the market is looking buoyant today. Of course, Nifty 50 has given up the 21,900 level, but still holding strong at the moment, over half a percent gain in trade. So status check of the market at lunch are, well, um, it's the gain of about over 100 points when we talk about Nifty 50, while Sensex is gaining with over 350 points at this point. And mid caps are uh, showing striped bit of outperformance to the key indices, 0.6% gain. But what's really not performing well and is in the red is Bank Nifty, 0.34% down in trade at the moment. Advanced decline ratio because of the broader market participation. The market strength is really buoyed with more advancing stocks than the decline. The PSU momentum still carries on in most of the stocks. Some of them have seen profit taking today. But on my list right now, in terms of percentage gainers for Nifty 50 at lunch are HDFC Life, Maruti, TCS, Wipro, HCL Tech. So tech is having a shining day today, Mangla. Tech is doing well and so are the mid caps. Uh, interesting that the Nifty Bank is underperforming today despite some recovery from the lows that we've seen on HDFC Bank. So the intraday chart of HDFC Bank comes up for you. It's been a very, very, uh, you know, big underperformer over the last uh, from the start of this year itself and from a point to point basis the stock price hasn't done much well in a couple of years but today from the lows it's seen some recovery but the nifty bank still about 150 points lower a lot of mid caps doing well a lot of them moving well on results as well case in point something like a go fashion at the bottom of your screen 15 percent revenue growth 12 percent EBITDA growth the stock higher by about a percent and just before that we had numbers coming in from ajmera realty as well a big big surge in their uh, ebit is what we saw the EBITDA and real estate pack in general has been doing well. We got numbers from Kodre's properties too. But look at Ajmera Realty up nearly 12, 12 and a half odd percent. So all of these stocks doing very well. Let's That's begin by focusing, however, on some of the big movers of the day. That's right. In fact, Paytm is something that we've been focusing on. And uh, let's talk about that because the shares of Paytm re really recover in trade today. But remember, this is after a few trading sessions of massive fall and after hitting lower circuits in the previous trading sessions as well for three consecutive days. And the stock is currently trading with gains of close to about uh, 6 over 6% at the moment. Let's uh, sum up all the news flow associated with Paytm in the day so far. So first up, a large trade worth 269.4 crore rupees saw 0.1% of the equity of the stock change hands. Secondly, sources tell CNBC TV18 that a group of Indian startup founders have written to the Prime Minister's office and the Reserve Bank of India, as well as the Finance Ministry on the Paytm Payments Bank issue. And the group has urged the government, as well as the RBI, to consider rolling back the restriction on the bank and also say that the action may have a far-reaching impact on the fintech ecosystem, Manglam. All right, and uh, we've also got some uh, denial coming in from both Paytm and Geo Financial Services. They've denied reports of any negotiations of an acquisition of the Paytm wallet. And as per our sources, Paytm founder Vijay Shekhar Sarma did meet with the RBI officials yesterday. 
however no forward movement on any remedial measures however that's about ptm let's move on and let's talk about uh, the new kid on the block bls e services listed on the bourses today after uh, you know whopping 129% premium and the stock continued to move higher currently sitting with the gain of nearly 172% post listing the issue price was 135 the stock just under 400 rupees right now we caught up with shikhar agarwal who's the joint managing director of the company and this is what he had to talk about the growth plans going forward we as a company have always been focused on the revenue and profitability of the company uh, you know the money that we will also raise uh, from the listing uh, is planned to utilize amongst other things in, in organic growth technological advancements uh, different purposes so i think that will also uh, lead to a good revenue addition and profitability of the company through acquisitions uh, you know we are working with multiple banks in different states in india we expect uh, you know to add new banks going forward to add new states going forward so definitely you know the momentum that we have achieved uh, last year you know we want to maintain that as per the rhp whatever we have filed you know uh, the numbers that we have uh, dedicate uh, you know indicated are you know historical numbers that we have achieved and definitely you know our objective uh, in getting this money also was to utilize it fully for growth capital so definitely we expect good growth numbers coming in the next few years uh, i don't have any clear visibility on the exact number that we will achieve now but even if you see in our parent companies the margins have increased uh, we are at uh, 20% plus margins and uh, vls international this company we have achieved ebitda margins of 13 14% and our objective as a company is to grow the revenue profitability when economies of scale kick in uh, you know cost becomes uh, goes down more revenue comes from uh, each uh, service point revenue goes up so definitely uh, margins should go up in the next few years all right so that's uh, the debut space uh, that we are talking about let's talk about more legal aspects and a big corporate development on that uh, legal war that is going on we are talking about z entertainment take a look at that particular counter right now um, you know it's down it's under a slight bit of pressure and if you really take a look at the one month chart the kind of fall that it had seen from 250 levels it's too far from recovering and that was the event of the merger falling through so that's the picture that we have and focusing on z entertainment's news development today following remember the z sony merger plan termination last month well z has pressed its application against sony in the nclt and yashja and our colleague who has been there uh, tracking all the developments in the courtroom joins in with all the details tell us yash where is this big corporate battle going towards well nisha today uh, as far as the hearing at nclt is concerned it was a very very short hearing Uh, Z Entertainment, of course, uh, uh, you know, objected to uh, Sony's decision to essentially terminate the merger between the company and Sony. Uh, and the second part was they sought uh, directions from the National Company Law Tribunal to enforce the scheme of arrangement to enforce this merger scheme between the two companies, that is, Z Entertainment and Sony. Sony, on the other hand, which is the dissenting party, uh, sought uh, you know challenged the maintainability of Z's claim uh, to enforce the scheme of arrangement between the two companies. There's a third party involved in this particular matter, that is Mad Men, which happens to be a shareholder of Z Entertainment. Uh, that entity has also sought enforcement of the scheme of arrangement between the two companies. Now, of course, uh, uh, that matter, that application from Mad Men, has been uh, admitted by NCLT. The date that has been given for hearing. as far as that matter is concerned was march 13th uh, now what happens is that uh, uh, the nclt today has said that it will serve notices uh, to both uh, uh, sony uh, it is seeking their reply in terms of uh, you know what is their take on z's stance of enforcing the scheme of arrangement between the two companies the reply to that particular notice from nclt will have to be provided within the next two weeks uh, nclt clubbing the both matters from madman as well as z entertainment will hear this application straight away on march 12th now all right so march 12th is when we will keep an eye out on uh, this development out there uh, yash thank you so much for joining in let's move on and let's uh, talk about some for, um, more news uh, pieces as well what we'll do is take a short break and on the other side we'll get a lot of updates that are coming in from the india energy week that is currently underway in goa stay tuned
Well, at midday, we have a lot of these energy stocks doing extremely well. IOC is at the high point of trade. HPCL has been on a tear up around 5.5%. We are seeing a decent move on Gale, ONGC, all these energy-related stocks as well. And understandably, we have the India Energy Week, which is currently underway in Goa. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated this edition of the India Energy Week. During his address, he did emphasize on India's infrastructure development, building the nation's refining capacities, and invited investments from global leaders in energy itself. Let's hear him out. Bharat is not only completing its needs, but is also completing the world's progress. Friends, today, Bharat is making a new हम इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बिल्डिंग मिशन पर काम कर रहे हैं इस वित्तीय वर्ष में हम इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पर करीब 10 लाख करोड़ रुपए इन्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं अब एक सप्ताह पहले जो भारत का बजट आया है उसमें हमने अब इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पर 11 लाख करोड़ रुपए से अधिक के खर्च का संकल्प लिया है हम पहले ही विश्व के सबसे बड़े रिफाइनर में से एक है आज हमारी रिफाइनिंग कैपेसिटी 254 एमएमटीपीए से अधिक हो गई है हमने 2030 तक भारत की रिफाइनिंग कैपेसिटी को 450 एमएमटीपीए तक पहुंचाने का लक्ष्य रखा है कि भारत इस समय एनर्जी पर इतना निवेश कर रहा है जितना पहले कभी नहीं हुआ और इसलिए आज दुनिया में ऑयल गैस और एनर्जी सेक्टर से जुड़ा करीब करीब हर लीडर भारत में निवेश करना चाहता है कितने ही लीडर्स इस समय मेरे सामने बैठे हुए हैं हम पूरी गर्मजोशी से आपका भी स्वागत करते हैं All right, a lot of investments expected in the energy space. Uh, let's also get you some more national updates for the day. And Uttarakhand Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dhami tabled the Uniform Civil Code Bill in the State Assembly amid a four-day special session. If implemented, the state will become the first state after independence to adopt the UCC. The passage of this bill was one of the big poll promises, remember, made by the BJP in the state ahead of the assembly polls in 2022. Now, the assembly session currently stands adjourned till 2 p.m., but it's an important day of the session. Important day indeed. What we'll do is take a short break, come back on the other side. We'll talk about uh, what's taking place abroad. The U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, tours West Asia in an effort to de-escalate tensions in Gaza. More details on that story as it develops on the other side. Welcome back. You're watching Business Lunch in the last 10 minutes of trade. A slight bit of improvement in the overall market across the board. Uh, Bank Nifty has recovered slight bit. Nifty 50 is back again to 21,900 level, just about holding on to it. And BPCL is surging in trade again. All right, now let's get you the latest on the developments in West Asia. And the United States carried out further strikes against the Iran-backed Houthis at Yemen during the weekend. NBC's Courtney Q files this report. The Iranian-backed Houthi militia again firing on commercial ships in the Red Sea and vowing more is to come, <laughs> despite new U.S. retaliatory strikes designed to deter them. We will not hesitate to defend lives and the free flow of commerce. We were there on Saturday night just after 10 p.m. when the U.S. and British military hit 36 Houthi targets in 13 locations. We're on the deck of the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower aircraft carrier in the Southern Red Sea. This is where, over the weekend, more than two dozen U.S. military aircraft took off 
to conduct strikes against the Houthi rebels in Yemen. Captain Marvin Scott flew an F-A-18 in those strikes, calling them a success. We do extensive mission planning. Everyone launches knowing you know, what the game plan is. Uh, we rarely miss. We're ready Lieutenant to Commander Alex Morgan is a helicopter pilot. Did we think we'd be doing it here in the Red Sea? My crystal ball was broken that day, but uh, the way we do it hasn't changed dramatically. The commander of the carrier strike group telling us there is still significant danger here. How big of a threat do the Houthis pose to freedom of navigation right now? Uh, a substantial threat. They could attack a commercial ship, uh, render it uh, somewhat in, uh, immobile, uh, and could bog the strait up for weeks, if not months. And he says the Houthis are getting critical help from Iran. They are getting intelligence uh, from Iran. Uh, they are using uh, Iran uh, to give them some targeting information. The commanding officer saying all of it creates a threat to the U.S. military, too. Are you worried about the safety of the sailors on this ship? Absolutely. Uh, am I worried about the safety of the ship? Uh, every single day. This comes as the U.S. is also retaliating against the Iranian-backed militias responsible for a drone attack that killed three U.S. soldiers hitting 85 targets in seven locations inside Iraq and Syria on Friday. The president has been under pressure to respond more forcefully, with over 160 attacks by Iranian-backed militants against American targets since October. Mr. Biden declaring the new U.S. strikes a success. Are the strikes working, Mr. President? Yes. Meanwhile, these missions are also leaving a mark with the American service members carrying them out. Seeing missiles being launched from aircraft, the explosions associated with all of these things. It's a lot of sights and sounds that will be etched in my brain forever. Well, Lester, there were reports of at least two new incidents over the weekend in which Iranian-backed militias targeted bases with Americans in Syria, but there were no reports of any injuries. All right, and as uh, tensions in West Asia escalate, the U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, met uh, with the Saudi Crown Prince and also the foreign minister on the following day. On Monday, actually, this follows the rising tensions that we saw in Gaza. The meeting that lasted for two hours saw the officials discuss a Saudi normalization deal with Israel. Palestinians also hoped that this visit would bring fruit to a truce before a threatened Israeli assault on Rafah is likely. Following this, Blinken headed to Egypt to discuss talks on a temporary ceasefire. All right, so those were all the important national, international and uh, business-related news for the day. I uh, hope you have a good day. It's a goodbye from the team of Business Lunch.